Welcome back to the South Today Sport, continuing our look back over 2014 and ahead to 2015 seasons, this time on the subject of netball. Joining me for that uh, review preview, Robin Broughton, of course, coach of the Pulse. Good evening, Robin. Welcome back. Hi, Tom. Yeah. Let's uh, reflect, uh, now you've had some time, uh, over what didn't quite work for you, why you didn't make the finals. Well, we probably had a bad start, and um, I've certainly made sure this year that we've got a better lead up to um, the start of the competition. We lost that one game to Thunderbirds by one, which really mm -hmm. kept us in. We were chasing from then on. And, um, and it, as it turned out, they had many losses, so it mm -hmm. was um, really disappointing. Were the Vixens really uh, <coughs> clearly the best team, yes. do you think, of the competition? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. Um, they've got good depth. They can um, ring the changes easily. Uh, their defence, particularly um, Jeeva Mentor, uh, she had outstanding ANZ uh, game. So, yeah, I think they were the best. Yeah, Donna's moved on. That's yes, the news has. that we had. And, yeah, so we're all hoping that there would be a change of heart. So but, did I. It's, it's, <laughs> but it is definitive, oh. is it? No sign of a change? No, no. but um, I think she'd always help out if needed, um, if we have injuries or something severe. Um, you can see that you know she's got a young family and it's just that time when you need to be with them and, and starting school and start at school and just those sort of things. Um, but she had a good season as usual. She had that severe injury at the end and nobody in the medical team could work, could believe she could get back on that court within mm -hmm. a week. So yes, it was just one of those things. Filling that gap's not easy, is it? No, it's not. Not for, not for us, mm. not for New Zealand. Mm. Um, and I, I just think she's had a wonderful career. And um, yeah, I think she could have gone a bit longer, actually, because she's so um, strong physically and mentally. But it was more families, and that's good. I, I get the so. impression, though, she'll miss playing. She yeah. miss, she'll miss playing, but <laughs> she'll miss the company as well, because she's a great team person. And she'll certainly miss being with the girls. She, she was really um, an integral part of the Pulse team, and she was new to it. And um, there were several players in her vintage as well, well which, which helps. Mm. Um, and they really enjoyed one another's company. So it was a really happy environment for her, um, and she fitted in so well. Uh, what about the gap between New Zealand and Australian teams? Is it, is it closing? Well, we saw a few more wins, didn't we, and the odd one on the road. I think it's closing in the ANZ, and then we saw the um, international, and I thought, well, we're not closing. Mm. Um, the Australians have got an incredible depth, and they've got youth players that come in and have been blooded well at the beginning, and have um, huge demands on them that are probably much stronger than the demands we make on our young ones. They um, work through an academy system right from way back through their systems and they just seem to be able to bring a new one and a new one and a new one because a lot of those girls that played in that team this, this year, the international side, they're, they're not that old. They're, um, they're on the court for most of their franchises um, but yeah, they're quite young and ready for it and um, extremely fit and agile. We didn't hear as much discussion about the umpiring differences between the two countries this year. Is that because people are just um, accepting it now or has it changed? Uh, I think the umpires of um, the, the communication between players and umpires and coaches and umpires is um, very good. We, we're particularly um, lucky in, in New Zealand. I, I think our communication between coaches and umpires, I can ask them anything and, um, and they come back with why they did it or what they didn't do. The other thing that's happened of course is the analysis work is so um, intense now and if I have something that I'm particularly concerned about and it has been to me completely wrong decision making, um, I can send the, the, the clip in and say well this is what we're talking about, this is, you know, give us a clear picture of, of why you ruled that way or why you are ruling that way and we'll adapt. But um, the game's got so fast and furious that it's not easy for them. I mean, they're, they're making decisions in the space of, you know, three seconds. Mm -hmm. And um, there's lots of big, strong, fast girls out there. What about the uh, relationship between yourselves and the national selectors? Is there a, much influence uh, as to who you pick and where you play them? Is there a lot of discussion or does Wai do her own thing? Um, no, they don't 
why doesn't uh, tell me where to put my players on the court? No, um, I will say that, although one of my top players has been told that she would be far better in a different position and that's where they wanted to play. So that is an example. Um, but I'm quite happy about that because I do a bit of it anyway and um, I've got a cover. Um, so, uh, and I can see, you know, she's an international player, I can see that she's probably um, doing a really good job in the, in the um, alternative position. Um, don't see a lot of the selectors, but they do have cluster groups throughout the season. Um, they are watched with their IPP, you know, their personal programs and individual things. But um, we go in about and do our own things. For instance, I'm much more into wanting a lot more agility and speed in, in our program. Um, and so the people that we employ to do strength and conditioning um, you know, I've, I've said that, that I want more emphasis on that sort of thing. So we do have our yeah, autonomy within our own franchises. And what about the strength of the squad for next year? Are you happy with the mix you've got? Mm, I, I am happy with the mix. I um, was really pleased when Amelia Ann Wells got in touch with us. Um, I'd seen her play for five birds on sort of cameo roles, just on and off. And, um, and I thought, oh, what an athletic, sort of agile, you know, girl. I didn't realise that she is... Um, eligible for us because her, of her Kiwi parentage. Mm. So and that was her driving force to, to play international? Yes, mm. and so she came across, um, primarily she, she signed with us and then the Ferns got to know and um, she was picked up for those trials and the first time she came on for the court, just to the court, which was down here, I thought she did very well. Um, but the second time I thought she'd lost her confidence a bit, so mm. let's hope that's not going to happen. <laughs> And Irene, it could be last time. Yeah. You, yeah, she's yeah. talking as if it is. Yes, it so is. that would be yeah. her digging deep to, to make a good final impression, perhaps. Oh yes, she would want to come out and really, you know, have a good season and finish on a high. Um, and she's, you know, had the fast five disappointment where she was selected for that, and then she had a back injury, so she was out for that. So um, I'm hoping she'll get through our whole season. And Jodie coming into the squad, is that yes, a direct replacement for Donna one. or are you um, going to no, mix and that, match there? No, that came up as a bit of a surprise. I was really surprised that um, Stel didn't want her, um, so it wasn't a matter of us asking her. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that she would be a sitter for them and that I think she's a really good feeder, that's one of her strengths and she certainly puts that ball into their goal shooter very well. Um, so then just came, there you are, Donna gone, Jodie was suddenly there, so it was fortuitous more than anything else. And good to have that international and pleased, experience, yeah. Yeah, and pleased to have her. Um, I've had her before as a, as a really young schoolgirl when I um, coached New Zealand right. Days, so it's not all new to me. It comes around and goes around, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah, long good. time. And a good mid-court presence, uh, Liana obviously returning is good. Yes, mm. Liana's coming back, she's really... Can. She'll be fitter this time too, won't she? She's yes, a better because position. the baby being be, you know, 18 months too. She, she um, probably wants this last go at the World Cup, mm -hmm. um, as well as coming out here. But in saying that, she's very happy where she is in England, and she has a lot to do with the English netball team that she plays for, the um, Super League side there that they've got there. And she, She's just one of those enthusiastic sort of sports people who mm. keeps herself in good trim and yeah, we're really looking forward to her coming back too. So when do you all get together and, and make a start we're on We're starting year? just next week at the beginning of December. Mm. Just, just, you know, we can only, the contracts of the Silver Ferns, you have to wait till they've had stand down time right. and then they've got a, nearly a whole month away in January, they're going to Fiji. Mm. Um, so we need to get a bit done before they go, but we've got a good pre-season, we've got all of February um, doing sort of pre-season stuff. All right, Robin, thank you very much for that. Let's look at the ANZ Championship uh, when we come back tomorrow night. Robin will still be here to talk about the international scene. We'll see you then. Good night.